Hey, welcome back to the TPO Rankings podcast and show. Jake, how are you going this evening? Excellent, Cody. A bit wet here in Brisbane. Probably the same mm. for you up there. Uh, how are you going? Yes, also wet, Jake. Uh, lots of rain around, lots of training and, and games being, uh, or training being cancelled. I've, I've been noticing on Facebook pages, clubs around here. So, And apparently the rain's supposed to stick around for a bit, so we might be seeing some postponed games um, on the weekend. It's uh, pretty normal, isn't it? That's how it's the start of the season up here. Yeah, for sure. Well, Jake, last week um, going into the round, it was Rockdale, Sydney United, uh, 58, and Melbourne Knights, who are the only clubs from Victoria and New South Wales to win their opening two out of two. Now, only one of those teams remain undefeated, and that is Sydney United, uh, 58. They've beaten Sydney Olympic one. We'll get into all the results in a second. Um Oh, sorry, they, they beat Olympic 1-0 the first round. Sydney FC yep. used team 5-2 the second round and Southern Sharks on, on the most recent um, round 3-2-0. Um, Jake, do you think Sydney United, early question here, do you think Sydney United will be top of the table come year end? Um, I, I'm going to say no. Um, really? It surprise me if they were, but I'm going to say no. I think... Prediction time, I'll go Rockdale. I think Rockdale will be um, strong strong enough this year again like they were last year. I think they'll finish top. Well, let's jump straight into the results from New South Wales. So um, Manly beat Blacktown 1-0. Great result there for Manly. As I mentioned, Sydney United uh, beating Sutherland 2-0. Sydney Olympic adding to Apia's terrible start this season <clears throat> and I suppose 2020 as well. Um, they beat, yeah, beat Apia 1-0. Jake's pick for top of the table come year and Rockdale drew three all away from home to Marconi. Wollongong uh, in that emphatic win over Mount Druitt Town Rangers 3-0 and the uh, Sydney FC youth team not doing too bad. Um, I think they've won, yeah, they've won two out of three. They beat North Bru- Northbridge Bulls 3-2. So, that, yeah, Sydney, the only game they've lost there is to, sit to the, and, um, and table, Cody, top of the table. Um, Northbridge Bulls, for those of I learned this actually, mm. they had that partnership, like we mentioned with MacArthur um, previously with Mariners when they were the North Shore Mariners. Um, mm. But from what I understand, the the Northbridge Bulls now um, is largely just the version of the MacArthur youth team, youth league team, um, although they yeah, don't right. have a, a official youth league team yet. So mm. that game over the weekend was essentially Sydney FC versus MacArthur youth teams. Yeah, well, it showed who was the the better team at the end of the day, Sydney FC. So, yeah, Sydney FC is sitting in third spot there. Sydney United top and Rocktail second. Um, and then a, and obviously it's only three games in, so nice and close. But Jake Arpia sitting bottom. Yeah, and they've just let go of their um, manager, I believe, in the yeah, last Yeah, I saw days. that as well. It's, um, yeah. Early. Championship winning coach from a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, crazy. But obviously they've, I mean, they finished with a, very uh, bottom of the table in 2020. Um, so, mm. you know, they kind of made comments that it results weren't as important, which I guess they weren't when it was kind of a shortened season and no relegation. But to start the season this year with three games and zero wins is not good enough for a club like Arpia. Surely three games in is too early to sack a coach. They're obviously going off um, last year's results and I'm guessing some sort of background um, information which we're not privy to. Potentially, yeah. You just never know, I guess, what's happening with the players and those around the club. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I probably agree with you. Maybe three games isn't enough, but at the same time, he's been there for a number of years now and mm. maybe they're just kind of, you know, the, those making these decisions that Arpi have decided three games in is enough for them to know that things aren't working and something needs to change. Otherwise, they're at risk of losing the whole season. Yeah, sure. So going into the weekend ahead, Northbridge hosts Marconi. Apia hosts Sutherland Sharks. Mount Druitt hosts Sydney FC youth team. Rockdale v Manly. That'll be a great game. Sydney Olympic v Wollongong. That'll be a great game too. And Sydney United 58. Uh, Blacktown City FC. So some really good games in, in New South Wales. Jake, you've picked out one in particular. Yeah, so I'm looking at the Sydney Olympic and Wollongong Wolves game. Um Mostly because both of those teams are teams that I would have before a game, before the season kicked off, I'd pick them to be um, in the finals hunt um, and potentially up there challenging for the title. So Sydney Olympic, as you mentioned, got that win over Arpia. They've had a, they're only one win from three, but they have played Sydney United and Rockdale. So um, they've, and now with Wollongong, that's four 
tough games right off the bat. Um, so I would expect them to can climb up the table. But Wollongong, after they won, um, you know, the year before 2019, I expect them to be up there as well. Um, although they're sitting where are they at the moment? They're in sixth, um, very early in the season, as we mentioned. Mm. But um, yeah, it's it's kind of one of those ones where both teams will want to be near the top. So this is one of those games where whoever doesn't win is going to find themselves slipping further and further away already. Sure. All right, let's go to Victoria. Um, I might mix up the the order next week, Jake, but for now we'll we'll, we'll stick with what we've got. So Victoria uh, is the second league we'll, or second state we'll look at. Um, what do we got here? Eastern Lions beat poor Melbourne Sharks 2-1. Was that Eastern Lions' first win of the season, Jake? I think it was. It was, yeah. Yep. yep. One, one win, one a win, draw. a draw, and a loss. Yep. And a loss. Bentley Greens, 2-1 winners over Den and Nong Thunder. Um, and I think that's left Thunder winless. So they've had one draw and two losses. So not a great start there. Oakley won all with South Melbourne. Uh, Green Gully. How's this, Jake? Green Gully beating Avondale, the top ranked, well, before the, going into the round, the top ranked non A league club in the country, Avondale, losing 2 0 uh, to Green Gully. Green Gully going top of the table with that win. That leaves them with two wins and a draw. Uh, Heidelberg drew 2 all with Altona Magic. Hume, 3 1 winners over Dandenong City and St. Albans Saints, 2 1 winners over Melbourne Knights. Jake, where will Green Gully end at the uh, finish up at the end of the year, do you think? Adam, it's an interesting one because, I mean, they were probably, what, five, six years ago, they they won the premiership and they were up there. Um, they've kind of fallen away a little bit over the previous few seasons and Heidelberg and Avondale have, have kind of been the two main ones at the top um, and Oakley Cannons, I guess. Um, I don't know if they're, if you know, it's going to be able to sustain it. I mean, beating Avondale is pretty strong indication that they've got some talent. Um yeah, it's one of those ones I don't really want to predict yet. I think I need another week or two just to see, and um, we'll get into it in a minute, but I, I'm looking at their game this weekend as well. Yeah, cool. Yeah, as I mentioned, they sit top of the table and Bentley Greens in second, so um, um, equal with Melbourne Knights and St. Albans Saints. Uh, bottom of the table, Jake, the two Dandenong clubs on one point each, so not a great start. Yeah, and the, the one point that they both have is from the – the derby that they played other. in round one, yeah. Mm. Okay, so heading into the the weekend, uh, Melbourne Knights host Hume City, Port Melbourne host South Melbourne, Green Gully, Heidelberg, uh, that'll be a great game. Bentley, St Albans Saints, Dandenong City host Avondale, Altona Magic host Oakley, and Eastern Lions. Can they make it uh, get their second win over Dandenong Thunder, or can Dandenong Thunder uh, chalk up their first three points? Jake, what game have you picked out? The Green Gully Heidelberg game. Um, this for the the reasons you just mentioned, I guess the Green Gully having such a strong start. I want to see if that can continue. But at the same time, Heidelberg um, in previous seasons has been the highest ranked NPL club, and they're still uh, up there. They're in seventeenth at the moment. But can they get their first win, and or do they keep falling down the the rankings? Yep. Okay, let's go to Queensland. Uh, Morton Bay, they're having a great start to the season. So this is round two for everyone following at home. They beat uh, Gold Coast United 3-1. Power, uh, the jersey I'm wearing tonight, they also had their second win of the season. They beat Redlands United 3-1 as well. Logan, uh, this is the game we previewed last week, Jake. You actually went along to this game. Logan beat Eastern Suburbs 2-0. You said it was a pretty um, even game? Uh, I thought East were actually the better side, or at least mm. uh, maybe not in terms of goal opportunities, um, but I thought that they controlled the game a little bit more, looked a little bit more comfortable, um, especially in the first half, I would say. Uh, but having said that, Logan went in 2-0 up at half time, and um, yeah, by in the second half, it looked quite even, and Logan were probably good for it. But East now two losses from two, and I, looking at them, I think they're a better side than that, so I expect them mm. to start getting some points. They lost to, I believe, the Raw. Uh, yeah, the uh, Raw youth, youth team. team. Yep. In the first round. Um, Olympic had a nice win uh, away from home, um, the trip to, to Mackay, Magpies. Very uh, late winner two. as Very well. Very late winner, yeah. I think a Leck, uh, Daniel Leck free kick. Uh, Brisbane yep. Raw, how's this? 4 nil winners over Sunny Coast Wanderers. I was not expecting such a, a big result there. Um, they're looking very good. Uh, Gold Coast Knights, sort of, a, I think, I don't know if it was late winner, Jake, but they come from behind to beat Brisbane Strikers 3-2. Do you know the order of those goals? I think Strikers uh, took a... 
I, I don't. Um, yeah, I believe there was a penalty maybe um, was mm. the first first one I think for strikers. Um, and but uh, from the highlights that I saw, Knights. I mean, strikers were in it um, and, and definitely created chances, but I think Knights were quite comfortable to be honest. Okay. And Jake, the shock of the round for me it was postponed on the weekend, and then they play Tuesday night. Tuesday night, yes, that's yeah. right. Capalaba beating Lions 3-2. I did not see that coming. Uh, I think they were up 3-0 at half time. Uh, and they've, and Lions obviously nearly came back. But uh, Lions have a, had a great chance, Jake, to potentially go top um, MPL side in the country on the TPO rankings after Avondale lost 2-0 to, to Green Gully. Uh, but they obviously threw it all the way with that result. Yeah, and this is the both ends of the ladder in terms of rankings. Lions being the highest ranked in Queensland, Capalaba from an MPL point of view being the lowest ranked, um, even after the wins. So the, I, don't, I don't think the rankings gave Capalaba more than about 7 or 8% chance of winning this game. Mm. So big shock. Big, big shock. Um, so four teams sit top of the table, two wins from two, Peninsula, Brisbane, Mont Bay and Olympic. Jake, is it Peninsula's, um, are they the team to beat this year? Well, I mean, it looks like it so far, doesn't it? I mean, they they won that first game against Logan round one, five one quite easily, and they've won this one round two seemingly easily, at least from a, a score point of view. So, yeah, I mean, at the start of the season, you you would probably pick the same four as I would for the finals, and Peninsula Lions both up there, and Lions have had that loss, so already we're seeing Peninsula take a little bit of a lead on them. Olympic mm. is probably the other one that you'd have to say will be there or For thereabouts. Sure. Yeah. And we, and I think Gold Coast Knights was the other team and um, yeah, this still got a bit, bit to prove, I think after losing the Lions and then sort of only just scraping by against a, a young uh, Brisbane strikers team, uh, they got a bit to prove, but it's, it's looking like a great year and Morton Bay uh, picking up some early points too. And the raw youth, they're always, it's a bit hard to judge the raw youth. Apparently they're good, but um I suppose it depends on which players come up and down from the A League squad as well, and and we'll see. A bit we'll inconsistent, that, at least that's yeah. in previous seasons. They have some weeks where they'll go and compete against the top sides, and then other weeks where they're struggling with the mid and bottom bottom table teams. So. And that's to be expected from a youth A League squad, I suppose. Probably yeah, exactly. similar to Sydney um, and clubs down there. So uh, this weekend, Jake Lions play Brisbane Roar in a bit of a battle there, I suppose. Um, uh, where uh, the Brisbane Raw used to train out of Lions, didn't they? Yeah, for the first couple of seasons, they trained at Richlands where yeah. Lions are based. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, Gold Coast Knights hosting Magpies. Morton Bay v Olympic. That's probably my pick of the round. Oh, yeah, I think that's your pick of the round too. We'll that's get to that in a second. Too, yeah. Sunny Coast Wanderers hosting Logan Lightning, which should be a nice close game. Peninsula, Gold Coast United, that, that'll be a really good game as well and a good test for Peninsula. Strikers at home to Capalaba and East see if they can get off the mark this season versus Redlands United. Uh, so you've picked, yeah, Morton Bay v Olympic. Jake, let's talk through that one. Yeah, both. I mean, two sides that are two wins from two. Um, Olympic picked up a couple of the ex A League players um, in the off season, so they'll be one of the favourites for the title. And Morton Bay probably, again, you can't really read too much into it. Two round, you know, only two rounds in, but they're looking pretty good so far. And they're actually ranked quite a bit lower than um, some of those other teams like Olympic and Lions. They're down in um, after the two rounds. They're ranked seventy first in the country. Um, so on paper, or at least on the TPO rankings paper, it says Olympic are, are quite clear favourites in this one. Um, but, yeah, I'll be interested to see if Morton Bay can hold their own. Absolutely. Jake, this weekend, Tasmanian, the Tasmanian MPL and the West Australian MPLs kick off. Yeah, two more. So we've, I've got a couple of games for you, Cody. Are you, do you want to run through all of the fixtures? Um, I don't. Nah, let's not. Let's just pick um, your pick of the rounds for now, and then we'll, we'll talk through some results um, next week. Too easy. So um, we'll go to Tasmania first. The two, the, or the the quite obvious game of the round for me was Devonport City against South Hobart, the two highest ranked sides in Tasmania. And between them, the two sides that have dominated football down there for, for a number of years now. Um, so that's on Saturday. Uh, and I would have thought at this stage, without knowing too much, I know South, I've seen a few announcements um, personnel-wise from South Hobart, but I think Devonport are, are still looking quite strong as well. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if these are the two sides competing by the end of the season. 
Uh, Western Australia, I've I've gone for a, a game on Sunday. Most of the games are on Saturday, round one, but I've gone for a, a Sunday game um, between Gwalop Croatia and ECU Jundulup. And partly because these, or mostly because these two sides are, are ranked very, very closely um, together, 69th versus 75th. Um, and the rankings say it'll be a very close one. So um, out of all the games, that was probably the one that caught my attention the most. Yep. And Florida Athena are the top ranked WA MPL side in at 37th, uh, Perth Soccer Club in at 49th. So some decent clubs um, over in on the west side of our country. Uh, Jake, let's go to the top 25. Did we see any movement? Uh, we saw some movement within the 25. No one coming in or out this round. Um, Lions with that loss to Capalaba fell below Sydney United. Um, and Sydney United obviously continuing their climb with their strong start. Avondale did drop points, but they're still the highest ranked MPL side uh, at the moment. Um, it would have, as you mentioned, if Lions had beaten Capalaba, I think they would have just overtaken Avondale. So they really did miss that opportunity. Mm. Um Adelaide Comets is currently in 25th. They obviously haven't had their first game yet, but they had both Peninsula Power from Queensland and uh, Victoria's Hume City move above them. So they're the club at risk, I guess, of falling outside the top 25. Um, And those clubs that are just outside pushing for their spot in the the in the kind of image, the top 25 we've got there are Bentley Greens, uh, Mm. Blacktown City and Gold Coast Knights. They're the three closest. Jake, Hume City, they're a bit of a sneaky one, aren't they? Sort of sneaking up into 24th. Um, I suppose they just quietly go about their business and like we don't really cover them too much compared to a lot of other big clubs. Um, Yeah, yeah. it's it's probably one of those ones. I mean, they were 25th going into the round and I mean, they are definitely one of the top sides in Victoria from a rankings point of view. They're just sitting... They've probably been one of those sides that's been around ranked 20th to 30th for a number of years. So they've always been mm. there, but they've never been the top side. So yep. maybe, yeah, they do sneak under the radar a little bit. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jake, any FFA Cup um, stuff to talk about? Um, I don't have any to to kind of preview, but I know that there have been a couple of um, fixtures announced and draws completed. Um, and from memory, there are some games in Western Australia this weekend. I think there might okay. be some more in Northern New South Wales as well. Uh, mm-hmm. And I might be missing some Victorian ones that are playing catch up. So definitely some yep. games going on around the country though. But still early rounds. It is, but there are some draws now like Queensland who have had the MPL clubs come in. So we are starting mm. to see some of the bigger names um, or if not the MPL, the kind of MPL twos and, yeah. and state leagues and those sort of clubs are now all being um, drawn into the fixtures. Yeah, I saw bullying lines and that sort of that that level of club um, down in Victoria starting to play as well, um, at least up here in Queensland. I think it's still a couple of weeks till those fixtures. Um, the draw has been done, but it'll be another couple of weeks. So we will keep you updated um, as those games start to unfold, as we get a bit closer. Uh, to finish off the show, Jake, we usually head to our under-23s. Uh, for those following at home, we, we pick 10 players each, under-23 players from the A-League. Uh, we follow them along in the fantasy website called Sports Deck. They get a score each week when they play. Uh, we're now. Well, do we need to do it this week, Cody? Let's just not. Well, I I haven't checked it yet, Jake. So by that comment, it uh, sounds like I had a good round. Um, yeah, this is probably, round twelve. Don't worry. Okay. Well, Jake Brimmer scored a, fr- a great free kick for you. I'm guessing he was might have been one of your only point scorers then. Yeah, I've I've had a pretty average round, um, mm. but more than that. So I've picked up a total of twenty eight points, which I think is about the lowest I've had, um, aside oh, from that bad. one week where where there were no games. Yep. Uh, and you've picked up sixty three points. Um, oh, nice! So for you, yeah, so I got Am like I you mentioned, Jake. You? Yeah, well, you've you've jumped ahead, Cody, but you've yeah. overtaken me. Uh, that's I think that's the first three time. rounds. For the first time, yeah, three rounds in a row, you've out your players have outscored me. Um, so you've got a fifteen point lead on me at the moment. Um, it was only a matter Jake, of time, Jake. I picked really good oh, players, you and so? you didn't. Yeah, yeah. Look, I've I've got a, f- a number of players who haven't been playing at all. Um, so do you as well. But out of the twenty players that we both picked, there were eight who didn't play this round, um, yeah, wow. and seven of seven of those were mine. So I actually oh, wow. only had three three players scored this week. Jeez, um, that's not good. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Um, but for you, Devlin, with that scorcher of a goal. Um, and and an assist well. for De Villa too. Yep. And uh, De Agostino got you 10 points mm. as well. So yeah. those were your two biggest scorers and uh, Jake Brimmer got me most of my points this week. 
I think D'Agostino was my top pick. Yeah, he was. So I just, I had faith in him and, oh, it's been fun to follow along, Jake. And we are, I mean, the under 23 players are usually, especially the ones, because we had to pick a couple that were under 20, was it? As well? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Those uh, sort of players. No, no. no, it wasn't under 20. It was first time first in the A-League. In the A-League, yeah. So those type of players are um, typically going to be playing less and a bit more, a bit inconsistent. And when we picked these 10 players, it was sort of, I think we picked them in about round two or three. So we only had a little bit of information to go off. Uh, and it was just more to follow along, wasn't it? To have a bit of interest in the, in the youth players. And, and that's been good so far. And it's been a fixture of, um, or feature of the A-League so far this season, about halfway through. So it's been a bit of fun. And um, yeah, there's obviously some players coming through now, um, like Yangi, is it Yangi from, um, what's his, Tete Yangi from Adelaide on the weekend, scoring against victory and stuff like that. I mean, that was his first goal. So he might go on and have a great rest of the year, but um, yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch so far. You've been enjoying it? Yeah, I have. It's one of those ones that, like I say, after doing the normal fantasy A-League um, last season, where really you, you're trying to get 11 players that are playing on the field. Um, mm. This one where you, we can't make changes and they're young, they're playing for teams where um, they won't get a chance every week and some players have been in there every week and they've taken their chance and run with it. Uh, but then you've also got others that are kind of coming in and out here and there and getting it, you know, time off the bench. Um, so it's, it's one of those ones that when you're looking at under 23 players, you kind of expect that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and when so rare expands to Australia, we'll have a leg up and know all the young players to go and buy. That's right. Go and buy uh, a couple of goalkeepers and, yeah, for those <laughs> wondering what we're talking about, go and Google so rare and, and you'll find out. Yeah, that no one will though. They should. It's interesting. They should. Yeah, potentially. All right. Well, Jake, anything else to add this show? No, um, other than getting more and more excited and into the MPLs as these other leagues start to kick off. And, oh, and I mean, the sunny Sunshine Coast Premier League kicks off this weekend, Jake. There you go. Who have you got, Cody? Uh, Calandra. We play Kiwana at home, but as mentioned, it's well, our field hold, does hold up, but it's just been raining nonstop. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if the all the games this weekend get called off because we all play on Saturday. Uh, that's just standard catch-up week yeah i guess so and we and we should mention cody um the ffa cup draw in queensland that we mentioned who have uh caloundra you're still in it who are you going to be playing in the next yeah we round? play pine hills from capital league one in brisbane they just got promoted they smashed uh capital league two last year had a really good year um and i think they're looking pr- apparently they're a decent squad they, they play some good football um so the rankings would be favorites but i dare say if you went and watched a few games, they'd probably be favourites going into the game, but it should should be fun. Um, and we're away from home that game as well. Trip down the the motorway. Yeah, to the north side of Brizzy, so not too far. But um, yeah, all right, Jake. Very well, let's good. wrap let's wrap up there. And thanks everybody for watching, listening, and we'll we'll see you back here next week. See you, Jake. See you later.